In this quick video, we're going to walk through how to Bates number multiple documents, even folders full of documents, using Adobe Acrobat Pro 10. Now, Adobe Acrobat Standard does not come with the Bates labeling feature, so it's really worth having the Pro version or upgrading to the Pro version if you do a lot of Bates numbering. The first thing that you'll do is open up Adobe Acrobat, and you'll, you'll select the Tools palette here. And under the Pages pull down, if it's not uh, already expanded for you, just click on the little arrow and expand this menu. Go down to the Bates Numbering section under Edit Page Design. And when I select that, I have two choices, to add Bates Numbering or to remove Bates Numbering. The Remove feature, uh, just remember that that's here because you can remove your Bates Numbers if you make a mistake, so that's a good thing to know about. We're going to go ahead and add the Bates Numbering, and we'll get a dialog box that will pop up and it's, this is the repository where we'll put, we will put our files to be Bates numbered. There are several ways to add your files. You can come to the Add Files pull down and select them individually, or you can select an entire folder, or you can simply drag and drop into this uh, middle section to be able to populate this area. I'm going to go ahead and add a folder, and I could go ahead and add more folders if I wanted to, full of uh, documents. Once we have our documents loaded into our Bates numbering window, we can rearrange the order pretty simply by either clicking on the name, if they happen to be in an alphanumeric order, that's sortable. You can also click on the date created if that's important to you. Another thing that you can do is move individual files up and down with these arrow keys. Just by clicking, I can move this file all the way to the bottom. Or, if I left click and hold on this file, I'm left clicking, holding my mouse down, and you can see it's highlighted. I can now just drag this to wherever I need it to be. I need this to go between uh, 202 and 204, and this blue line is showing me where my file will be dropped. And when I release my mouse, that file has been moved. So once we have everything in the order we would like to have it, we're going to go on and, and uh, tell it where we want to put the files. The next thing you want to do is go to the Output Options and select where you want to put the files and how you want to name the files. I highly recommend that you put the files somewhere in a new folder on your computer that you don't overwrite your originals, that you keep an original set. So I'm going to browse out and I happen to have a, a folder ready to go called Bates Number Documents and there's nothing in it right now. And select OK. So now whenever I Bates number these documents, they're going to automatically be saved into this new folder for me. And it won't uh, do anything to the original documents that I have. Now I can keep the naming structure the same, exactly as the original document. I can add to the original file name by putting some prefix or suffix. Or I can do something that's really great. Um, I can replace the file name with the actual Bates number. That's very, very handy to have a completely ordered Bates number set of exhibits. So when I have all of these selected the way that I want them, I'm going to go ahead and select OK. Now we're ready to actually set up our Bates label itself. So when we select OK, we have everything in the order that we'd like it, we select OK. We will get another menu box here. And here's where we can choose our settings for the font size. I'm going to just choose standard Arial 10 and we could make it blue or some other color. I'm going to choose black. We have options of where, how far down we want the, the um, Bates number to be and choices of where we want to actually place the Bates number. I'm going to select the right footer text. That seems to be the most common place to place the Bates label. And the next thing I do is I select Insert Bates Number. And this tells me now what number do you want to start with in case you're picking up you know, with another set of documents and you need to start with a new number. In this instance, we're starting with one. And how many digits you would like to use. I'm just going to leave it to the default of six. And then you can add a prefix or a suffix. I'll just put USA for this example. And I'll select OK. So this shows you a, a picture of what your Bates label is going to look like. Perhaps I'd like a space in between the USA and the number. If you want to change this, if you need to, to revise this, we need to delete the script that's there. Just delete it and go insert Bates number again and then just type in what you'd like it to be. I'm going to select OK. Now you can see it's added a space. Once that looks right to you, then we're, we have just one more thing to do, and that is to go on to the Appearance Options. 
and when I select this appearance options, I have the ability to shrink the document to avoid overriding the text of the document or the graphic, and that's very handy. It's just marginally going to shrink it just to make sure that you don't overwrite this on anything that's important. And I think that it's well worth the just a tiny bit of loss in, in size of the document to get the ability not to have something important covered up. So I'll select OK. And now the next thing that we do is hit the OK button and the Bates numbering process has begun. And it'll go through every one of those files in the order that they that, that you put them and it will apply the Bates numbering to every single page and will tell you when it's done. Okay, now let's go check our work. I'm going to navigate over to the folder that I told it to save all my files into. Open that up and the first thing you see is all of my files have been renamed with the starting Bates number for that document and the ending Bates number for that document. And let's go take a look at it. And when I open it up you can see down here that there is my Bates number and if I click through the pages you can see it's scrolling appropriately through as it's labeled each and every one of them. And I wanted to point out one more thing here. Let me grab another document. When we selected that feature where we were able to make sure that the Bates number did not cover up something important, you can see here where that's effective. If it had not shrunk this document just a little bit, this Bates number would have been hidden uh, within this black portion of the photograph. So that's just a handy little tool trick to know about. But you can see on this document as well, uh, the Bates numbers are there and uh, they all are as they should be. And that's it. You see how simple it is to be able to Bates number hundreds of documents at a time using Adobe Acrobat Pro 10.